All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is March 28th. We got ourselves six games on the NBA slate that we're going to jump into today. Last night wasn't our night. You know how many wins we had last night? Well, same amount of pieces of furniture that are in this room. Yes, we are in the new apartment in one of the bedrooms here. But uh, yeah, zero wins last night. So we got to bounce back tonight. You know what, you guys know. I'll come on here and be transparent in the first 30 seconds of the video and tell you that we stunk last night. But you know what? You can't come back from a bad thing if you don't have the bad thing first. So let's come back tonight. That's either an optimistic mindset or a dumb mindset. But guys, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Apologies if it's a little echoey. Um, again, we are recording from the new apartment. I uh, didn't want to do a car video today because we went 0-3 in the car last night. So call me superstitious or stupidstitious. But uh, yeah, guys, we're going to jump into each and every game. We'll go through our lean on the spread, our lean on the total, but the final plays that I'm actually going to be rolling with will be in the pinned comments. So if you guys do want to ride with my actual final plays or fade me like you should have done last night, make sure to check out that pinned comment. I update it throughout the day um, with my plays that I'm actually locking in. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Guys, we got a bunch of likes on yesterday's video. Let's continue to run up the like button. Let's hit that like button so every single like makes this room less echoey somehow. Let's try that one. Go ahead and smash that thing. Um, let's move on to the first game here. We have the Wizards taking on the Celtics here. Wizards at home, total sitting at 11 or 227. Wizards 11 and a half point dogs at home. Last time these two teams played was late November. Boston won 130 to 121. They did, in fact, cover in that game. They are 7 and 3 against the spread, 4 and 3 in their last 7 on the road. The Wizards, 3, 6, and 1 against the spread. The Celtics team finally kind of got back into, um, I guess, the against the spread good graces, right? Um, whereas Washington is struggling a little bit. They're also going to have Bradley Beal and Cal Kuzma out tonight. I'm a Celtics fan. This isn't a biased lean. I'm going to lean towards the Celtics here minus the points. It's a lot of points. I wish this one was, you know, in the single digits. We don't have that tonight. So keep an eye on the pin comment to see if it ends up becoming a final play. But as of right now, I am leaning Celtics minus the 11 and a half. And then in terms of the total 227, I think this one can get up into the 230. So I'm going to lean right towards the over in this one as well. So Boston and the over. Moving on, we have Miami taking on Toronto here. Toronto, uh, three point favorites at home. Total sitting at 219 and a half. Last time these two teams played was mid-November. Toronto won 112 to 104. They did cover that game as well. In their last 10, they're 5, 3, and 2 against spread. Toronto also playing really well at home. Four, in their last six games, 4, 1, and 1 at home. And Miami, not the best against the spread team, as we've known all year long, but also in their last 10, they're 4 and 6 against spread. In their last 10, they're 27, 45, and 3 against the spread this season. I'm not really loving that. Cal Lowry is questionable here. And then for Toronto, a couple injuries to note. Gary Trent Jr. is questionable here. Will Barton is doubtful. Toronto coming out double, uh, two wins in a row, one against Detroit, one against Washington. They covered in both games here. I do think that Toronto is the play. I don't love it. I feel like Miami's going to come to play and start to get better and better um, in these later, I guess, later days of the season. We've kind of seen it as of late, but I'm still going to lead Toronto. They're playing really well against spread at home. It's only a three-point spread. And then a 219 and a half total, it looks a little too good to be true for me. So I'm going to lean towards the over here as well. This Miami team has been letting up a decent amount of points. You know that we were taking their overs when these numbers were so low. Uh, if you guys were watching every day, a couple weeks back when we were losing um, because we were getting tempted by the bait there. But they started to cash some overs here. Two overs in a row have hit for Miami. Miami. So I'm going to lean towards that direction there in terms of the total. Moving on, we got Cleveland taking on Atlanta. Cleveland one and a half point favorites on the road. Total at 234 and a half right now. These two teams, last time they played was late February. Atlanta has one point favorites. Pretty much a pick em game. Wins 136 to 119. They also played in November. Cleveland got that win and covered 114 to 102. Those are the only two meetings of the season. Cleveland not doing as well as we would have expected here. Um, in the, I would say 10 games. Uh, 10 games or so. They're 4-2 against the spread in the last six, but if you 
kind of extrapolate that or expand, I should say, that sample side. Five and five against the spread in their last 10 games. Three and three on the road. So nothing really to chomp at the bit there. Um, but Atlanta looking at it the same way. They're five and five against the spread at, as well in their last 10. One of the first things that jumps out to me is this number, um, the total. Now you're probably thinking, oh my God, that's something that Ev would definitely look at the under because it is a high total, right? Not this time. Four of the last six times these two teams have played, the total has gone over. I do think that this one can get up in there. Um, again, last time they played 136 to 119. So I am going to look at the over as weird as that is. It is a very, very high number. But I'm also going to take a peek at Cleveland in this one. In terms of injuries, they do have some to note here. Jared Allen is questionable. Raul Nito is also questionable. And then for Atlanta, no major injuries. I think that Cleveland gets the job done tonight. Um, four straight wins. I think once they, they've covered two of the last three games, I don't have that exactly in the notes, but I do think that they're a better team than this Atlanta team, and Atlanta smoked them last time, so you got to think Cleveland's coming into this game being like, you're not going to do that again. Next game on the slate here, we have Charlotte taking on OKC, the rumbling, covering Thunder. Oklahoma City with nine-point favorites to open. Um, I don't have a live line for them. I also don't have a total line available at my disposal as well. So I'll say this. If this total is 230 I would say 233 or below. I'm looking at the under. Um, if it's around 227, I'll probably look at the over. So it kind of gives you that range of where I think this game falls. Anywhere from 227 to 233. Um, last time these two teams played was December 29th. Charlotte won 121 to 113. They are 6-4 and four against spread in their last 10. 3-1 and one against spread in their last 4. Gordon Hayward is doubtful. Terry Rozier is doubtful. Ta Kelly Oubre is doubtful. Cody Martin is questionable. And then for OKC, Shea Gillis Alexander is questionable. I almost feel foolish to make a pick on a spread here when we don't really even know who's playing, who's in, who's out. Um, but I am going to lean Charlotte. I think it's a lot of points, nine points. This rumbling covering Thunder team, you know I like them. Um, if you do watch every day, we've cashed with them plenty of times this season. But they're nine-point favorites. That's a little bit too much. I don't trust them as nine-point favorites against anyone in the league. It could be even against these, you know, even worse teams like Charlotte. So um, I just don't trust that. So I'm going to lean towards Charlotte plus the points, but I think the spread is due to change. Again, I don't have a live spread here. This is just the opening line that I'm talking about, that nine points. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the injuries. I'm leaning Charlotte, um, and then I gave you my sort of breakdown of the total there as well. But I feel like a bunch of stuff is bound to change in this game. Um, let's move on, guys. You hit that subscribe button. You hit that like button. Thank you. Now I can move on. All right, let's move on. Orlando taking on the Grizzlies. Grizzlies nine-point favorites at home. Total two, 35 and a half. These two teams played early January. Memphis won 123 to 115. They did, in fact, cover. That was the only meeting of the season. In their last 10 games, five and five against the spread. The Magic, three and one in their last four against the spread on the road here. And they're six and zero oh in their last six games against the spread. I don't want to do it, but I'm leaning Magic here, plus the seven and a half points. I do think that this Memphis team can win this game and probably win it big as well. So if you're in the comments being like, nah, dude, Orlando is not the play tonight, I don't think I'd argue you, but I am going to lean towards Orlando here. Memphis, John Morant, doubtful. Steven Adams, obviously, we know is out. Um, and then for Orlando, Jonathan Isaac, he's been out for a season as well. As Memphis team has won nine of their last 10 games. That's why I wouldn't really argue anyone that says, hey, go out there and you know pick Memphis because they're going to win this one. I don't think that that's a crazy take. But uh, Orlando has won four of their last five games against some decent competition as well. So I think this could be a better game than people might think tonight. So I'm leaning Orlando. And then in terms of a total 235, this one I kind of went back and forth on, I'll be completely honest, but I'm going to look at the under. I think this one stays in the two, um, in the early 230s here. Uh, so I think that, you know, we have like a one to two point margin discrepancy there in terms of what I'm predicting and Vegas there. I think I'm just going to slightly lean towards the under. All right, guys, moving on. We got Golden State taking on the Pelicans. This is the last game of the slate. Golden State, eight and a half point favorites at home. Total at 234 and a half. I think that this is a lot of points to lay if you are Golden State. You're looking at New Orleans coming off the win last night against 
Portland 124 to 190. I leaned Portland. It wasn't a final play last night, but man, this this Portland team or this sorry this Pelicans team is playing good basketball. Seven and three against the spread. The the username's escaping me, so I do apologize for that. I think it starts with a T, so I'm gonna call you T. But I uh, say and put some respect. Yesterday's video put some respect on the Pelicans name. I think I have to. I don't give the strength of schedule that much credit here, but they are seven and three in their last ten games here, both straight up and against the spread. The Pelicans are playing good basketball, whereas Golden State is kind of rocky. So you know what? I'm riding with the commenter from yesterday. I'm gonna look at the Pelicans here plus the eight and a half points. In fact, I think it's a really good spot for a teaser. If we can do like an eight point teaser on that, give me Pelicans plus 16 and a half against the Warriors team that you never really know what you're going to get with these ups and downs. I think I might do that. So um, keep an eye on the pin comment to see if we do ultimately pull that one off. Um, the only thing that would worry me of this is that the Warriors are playing at home where statistically this season, they're much better than on the road. So I'm gonna lean Pelicans here plus the points. In terms of a total 234 and a half, I'm gonna look at the under ever so slightly there. But uh, yeah, guys, that's all I have for you guys say. Hopefully the audio is like passable. Let me know in the comments if this is too echoey, if you guys would prefer the car, because at least the car is kind of like noise canceling, right? But uh, yeah, pretty soon we'll have a bunch of equipment in here. This is not the way that we'll face, we'll probably face, you know, you guys don't really care about that. But yeah, excited to set up this room, excited to, uh, to, to you know, get the new digs all set up and uh, bring you guys the best content possible. So cannot thank you guys enough. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have much else to say, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video, all right? Peace out.